Hi there, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to try to show how to start programming in seven minutes. We're going to use the C sharp language. The first thing you need to program are variables and variables are used to hold data. So for instance, if we want to use three in our program, we can store it into the variable and how you create a variable in C sharp is you specify the type followed by variable name and then you can initialize it or set it by using the equal sign followed by the value that you want to set it to. Some of the variable types that are available in C sharp is bool for storing booleans, true, false, then integers to store whole numbers. And then we have float for storing decimal numbers and we have string to store text. Of course, there's lots more types in C sharp, but these are the basic ones that you can use to get started. And again, here's how you use them. First, you specify the type int bool float string then followed by a variable name then we use an equal sign if we want to set the value after we pass in the value we use a semicolon next we're going to take a look at operators and there's lots of different operators that you can use in programming some of which are mathematical operators we can use plus sign to add minus to subtract multiply divide modular and here we have an example for each one of them then we have relational operators which some of them are less than greater than equal not equal and so on and the relational operators return a boolean which is a false or a true and the last two operators that we're going to mention are conditional operators the two conditional operators are and and or so for and if we have true false it's going to be false if we have true true then it's going to be true and for or we have if it's true and false it's going to be true the only time when it's going to be false if both of them will be false and here's an example how you would use a mathematical operator. So here we specify the type int and create a new variable C. We set it to equal A plus B. Next up, we have if statements. You can use if statements to check some conditions. And we showed some of the relational operators right here. And you can use all of these in the if statement. So here we have if A is greater than B. If it's true, then we will execute everything that is inside if statement. And what we do here is we change the variable my text to say a is bigger. Next up are loops. And one of the loops that we have is a while loop. And for the while loop, we also pass in the condition like we pass for the if statement. And here we actually use a conditional or operator. So we can check for two things. And the while loop is gonna run until the condition is no longer true. So we'll go inside and run these operations. We have B plus plus and B plus plus is equivalent to B equals B plus one. And here's another way you can write it, B plus equals one. And same thing for A minus minus. One more loop that we have is a for loop. And a typical use of for loop is for running something X amount of times. So in here, how it works is first we initialize the value of I, we set it to zero. Then we have our condition that we're looking for. So as long as I is less than 10, we're gonna execute this for loop and every time that the block in the for loop finished running we will increment i by one and inside here we have console write line and we pass in a string that we want to write to a console write line is a method or a function that exists that we can pass in a string and it will print out the string in the console Next up are functions, and you can think of functions as a way to group your executable code. In fact, all executable code in C Sharp needs to be inside a function. How you declare a function, you use a return type, and if you don't want the function to return anything, you can use void. If you want to return an int, you would use an int. After the return type, you put the name for your function. So we have my function, and it's followed by open and close parentheses. Inside those open and close parentheses, you can put variables that you require the function to have for you to execute this function. And to surround our block of executable code, we use the curly brackets. You can use the input variable in your executable code, and since we expect in int t in our input and we can use a t instead of a written number 10. If you set a return type you need to return value of that type so at the end we can say return and pass in c which is a type of int and this is a complete function. Just like we use a function to group our executable code, we can use classes to group our variables and functions. And to create a class, all we do is use the class followed by the name of the class and enclose all the variables and function inside the curly brackets. Now you can use this function in some other class. And right here we have a test class that we created and it has a test function. And for us to call that function, we need to create a new instance of a class. And it works exactly the same as variables. So we have the variable type, our variable name, and then we set it to a new 
my class and that creates a new instance of that class and you can create multiple instances and each instance is going to have its own data after we have this object we can use the object name mc dot my function and pass in the number that we have and that will execute the function currently we're still missing one important thing to execute the function and it's the access modifiers so there's two primary access modifiers public and private and by default if you don't specify any access modifiers to your variables or functions it will be private and when it's private this function can't be accessed outside of the class so we can access it inside the class if we have multiple functions but outside of the class in this task class we can't access my function so if we want the my function to be publicly accessible we need to specify that in our functions we can do that by adding public keyword in the beginning of my function and that will make my function available to run at this point one more important keyword that we have is static so here we have the keyword static added and static makes the variables and the functions attached to the class and not to an instance of a class so when using static we don't have to create a new instance of the class to execute it and how that looks is you just use my class dot add or for variables my class dot my num and that gives you access to those variables and functions and that's exactly what we see right here console dot write line so write line is a static function of console and where this console class comes from is from a library and you can think of a library as collection of classes to be able to use this class console we need to specify what library we want to use in our code and you can do that by saying using and specify what library you're using and the console class is inside the system so there you go we have covered the basics of coding in c sharp the cool part about programming is that once you know one language it's easy to move to another one because there's a lot of similarities that is it for this video and in the next video we're going to start with unity engine